every organization measures something, some of their processes. Um, so to give the managers a way to monitor or to improve the outputs. And very often there is a, a target set such as uh, less than one defect per unit. And those targets, these external targets that are set by management or by customers, but not by the process itself, such targets are called specification limits. The management expects to achieve that the target is, is reached by the end of the year, and the workers are um, told this is the target and that they have to be very careful to meet the target or vigilant and to avoid defects. Now, as a statistician or, or a quantitative person, what we like to do is we'd like to plot the quality metric over time. Right? So, and this plotting the metric over time is called a run chart. It's a scatter plot of a measure of interest over a sequence. It's usually over time, but not always. And you could plot each individual observation over time, or sometimes you can plot averages aggregated over a day or so, so daily averages over time. So here's an example. And here's an example where we have um, a series of measurements over time. We have a specification limit. We have to be um, less than one defect. And you can see one is here. So we're trying to be below this line here, right? So, and we have five possible answers here. Specification limit is sometimes met. Some tweaking required, specification not met. We have to be more vigilant, specification not met. Give bonuses to the teams when they reach a specification limit. Not met, redesign the process, not met change the specification limit. Okay, so I'm actually gonna take this last one off the table right away. You cannot change the specification limit. Some years ago, I heard that um, China changed its policy as to what recycled material they accept from Western countries. So it used to be that um, a lot of Western countries exported their recycled materials to China. And, and what they did is they said, well, we still take recycled material, but it has to meet a certain quality. You know that recycled material is often contaminated by things that don't belong in there or paper and plastic are mixed or things like that. So they said they still take it, but there's a specification limit on the quality and they had a way of measuring that uh, how many what um, what percentage tiny percentage was allowed to be um, incorrectly sorted that is a specification limit you cannot change it china says they uh, that's their limit and that's just what it is and then you have to figure out a way to um, make the recycling more pure if you don't have that quality metric already if you don't meet it um, or you can't export to China. It's one of the two things, right? So you have to change the process. An in-control process is a process that doesn't drift up or down or does strange things. From the graph, from the previous graph, the process was in control in the sense that it wasn't trending upward or downward. It, you know, it was variable, was above, mostly above that limit here, um, but it wasn't going anywhere, right? It was sort of stable in control, we say in control. So what that tells us, a process can be in control, but still not meet the specification limit. There are often reward systems implemented based on the specification limits. But that's dangerous. So it's, uh, well, it's dangerous to blindly focus on the specification limits and, 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 uh, and put major reward punishment on it because workers are smart, right? Workers will find out a way to deliver the specification limit if they're told that that is the overall objective 
um, by by messing with the system, by contorting the system. In in a book by Wheeler, one of the gurus in this area, there was a wonderful anecdote where workers were told that they had to produce um, at least that many um, uh, things on the production line. And there was a measurement unit uh, on the production line that counted how many uh, units went past it on the production line. And the workers were told they have to have to meet that 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 goal, and that number must be at least whatever it was going to be. And the workers knew that there were very strong incentives, uh, like they would get admonished by their bosses, they might lose their job, they might lose bonuses. There was a very very strong focus on that. Well. And what did the workers do? They made a way, they found a way to make it happen. They moved the finished product from the warehouse back to the production line. So it would be counted again. And if that wasn't enough, they would do it a third time and move it again back to the production line. So it would count, be counted a third time. They delivered what the management wanted. They delivered the count. Now, they didn't deliver in the sense of what the management actually wanted, um, but um, the way the the system was set up, they they did deliver. So workers will find uh, find a way around, and just simply rewarding and punishment and and being vigilant um, it doesn't help. The point is, you have to change the underlying process. Don't blame the workers change the underlying process. That is the end of this segment. <laughs>